It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. These are the final seconds. The lead in the fourth. Can they hold on to it? That do or die time. And everything rides on one shot. But it isn't going to be that easy. This is down to the wire. One shot to take you to the top. One winner. This is clutch basketball. That's the NBA playoffs. That's game. Welcome to the Locked on Grizzlies podcast. My name is Sean Coleman. It's a pleasure to be with you once again. It is Wednesday, March 31st. Hard to believe that we are already three months into the new year. Here we are right on the doorstep of April already. Um, and in today's episode, I am very happy to welcome a special guest. He's been one of my favorite followers ever since I've started, you know, writing and podcasting for, you know, covering the Grizzlies um, through Locked On and through other places. Before we introduce him, we do want to remind you that this show is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. Stay tuned for later on in the, in this episode where we will name our Michelob Ultra Player of the Week. But this guy is someone that I have really become a big fan of. His name is Tony Jones, one of the most talented and best writers out there for the Athletic. He covers the um, Utah Jazz for the Athletic, and he's been kind enough to join us today. Tony, how are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for uh, uh, that intro. That was uh, way too kind of you. Well, every word is meant for those who may not remember. I vividly remember it. I was actually on the way to eat dinner with my wife and her grandmother that night. And it just so worked out that Tony was kind enough to get some time to interview me. So I stopped the car. We had about a 25 minute interview talking about the Mike Conley rumors. And ever since then, Tony's been kind enough to keep in touch with me. Uh, but that that's where we are. But uh, of course, we have Tony on for tonight's um, Grizzlies Jazz game. And we want to get all of Tony's thoughts um, from the fact that the Jazz and Grizzlies have played quite a bit. Of course, you can find the show at Locked on Grizz, myself at Stats SAC on Twitter, the podcast, wherever they're available. We'll make sure to get Tony's information to you at the end of the show. But Tony, want to jump right into it uh, with you. The Utah Jazz, I don't know if many expected for them to be this good, but they certainly are. And I don't know if many expected a big reason why to be is Mike Conley. Of course, as you know, we all love him here in Memphis. What has clicked so well with Mike Conley this season as far as his play goes and just overall the impact that it's had on the Jazz? So to to answer that question, I'll uh, I'll bring up um, you know Utah's acquisition of of um, Matt Thomas. They traded for Matt uh, last week at the deadline, and and one of the you know when I asked the organization, you know what what are the reasons that you you traded for Matt, and you know and and one of their answers was, you know we have a history of guys coming into our program and you know excelling in their second year and kind of figure while kind of figuring out figuring it out in their first year and I think you know even with Mike Conley you know being in the league since 2000 was 2008 you know so 14th year in the league um, I think it it that applied to him Um, I thought that he had to you know kind of figure it out and feel his way uh, in year one and in year two, um, he just, you know, it was it was more he was just playing by instinct and not thinking about every play. Where should I be? You know, what do we do on this wrinkle? What do we do on that wrinkle? It was just kind of more, okay, now I know the system and, you know, I can go out and play. And, you know, we all know that Mike Conley is a heck of a player. So, you know, when he's playing, you know, just by, by feel and, and, and by – um, you know, n- without having to think about, you know, the system that he's in and, you know, everything is just second nature to him. Uh, you know, he's, he's back to what he was, which is, he's always been one of the best point guards, uh, in, in the league. So, um, I, I think just the, the, him being, uh, in a second year in the jazz system, uh, you know, being, becoming more comfortable with Rudy Gobert, becoming more comfortable with Donovan Mitchell. I think all of that is has led to 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 what he's been uh what he's become this season. 
and what he's become this season is an all-star caliber point guard. And, and, you know, we, we just, we, we've all known that, you know, we've known that he's played in an all-star level before. It's just that it's all, you know, you know, you've covered basketball for several years now, especially out West. It's always been such a crowded room when it comes to those all-star level point guards in the West. But we know that his play is certainly, you know, improved on the court. But can you speak a bit more about his relationship with Coach Quinn Snyder, his relationship with those guys? One thing that always stood out about Conley is he was a far better person than he was player. I'm sure that the Jazz's organization and their fans are thankful that they're able to experience that up front now. I'm sure he's making just as much of an impact in the locker room in the community in Utah as he did here in Memphis. Yeah, absolutely. Um you know, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's one of those guys where he's one of those guys where if there's a problem with, with, if you have a problem with Mike Conley, the problem is most likely you. That that's, that's how good a guy Mike Conley is. And, um, you know, he's, he's one of those guys where he just kind of gets along with everybody. And, you know, I've seen that up close, you know, uh, from a personal level, um, he's, you know, I, I always get, a, I, I typically get along with the players that I cover. Um, uh, but Mike has always been, you know, nothing but kind to me, um, nothing but, you know, but gracious to me. And he's like that with his teammates and he's like that with his coaching. And there's a reason why, uh, the organization was, you know, so demonstrative, uh, you know, about, you know, hey, Mike Conley is an all-star. Mike Conley is an all-star. You know, they just flat out like the guy, you know, you know, a lot. And um, he's he's made such a positive impact um, with the Jazz. He's made a positive impact uh, in the in the Utah community. Uh, he's made a positive impact with his teammates. He's a galvanizer in the locker room. Um, he's, like you said, you know, Mike Conley to me is, 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 you know, one of the best point guards uh, of this generation, and he's a better uh, human being than he is a basketball player, and that says a lot. It certainly does. And, and speaking of being a human being, the last time that changed subjects a little bit, the last time Tony and I talked, Tony had put out a very – very favorable tweet for Memphis and their franchise. Uh, if I remember correctly, Tony is a huge fan of the way that Zach Randolph played back in his days with the Grizzlies and the mentality that he brought. Well, Tony, I know that you're a big fan of basketball in general. And when it comes to a mentality, a personality, Conley's eventual replacement, John Morant, he basically has taken over Conley's role as the face of the franchise. A guy that it just seems everybody loves because of his mentality, his leadership, how mature and good he is at such a young age. From someone such as you, who opinion I value highly when it comes to NBA players, especially, you know, with who they are on and off the court, just your impression of Jaw so far now, 100 games into his career, and from seeing him firsthand in Utah over the weekend. Yeah, you know, I I thought, you know, uh, he got my vote for rookie of the year last year. Um, you know, I think that he's just such a talent. Um, I, I remember the tweet that I put out about him, um, you know, on Friday, and it, it was, you know, I hope it came out the way I meant it. You know, and I meant it as, as one of the big, it's such a big compliment. You know, he plays like you know, a guy who's who's slow, doesn't have explosion, you know, has to rely 100% on craftiness, except for he's the best athlete on the floor. And what that means is, you know, he's a guy that, that doesn't have to rely on his athleticism, even though he has jaw jopper and athleticism. Um, he knows how to play the game, and he's super skilled. He you know he's he's terrific at keeping his dribble. Um, he's terrific at the search dribble. Uh, he's got a great floater game. He obviously finishes over the top inside. Uh, he's phenomenal in transition, and that's where his athleticism takes over. Uh, he's a great passer, and you can see on the floor his teams gravitate towards him. He's a leader out there. Um, you know I, I I think Memphis is in in great hands with, with, with Ja. Um, he's, I thought that he would be a, a good, a, a very, very good point guard in this league. 
Um, I'm not sure I thought that he'd be this good this fast. Um, and, you know, I just think that he's one of those guys uh, that you just hope that, that stays healthy because, you know, I think the game of basketball in general is, is better um, better off with him, you know, on the floor and, and, and healthy and, and, and playing every night. Agree completely. And that's why we love getting to see him play every opportunity that we get. But if Grizzlies fans want an idea uh, of the eventual close to a finished product we'd love to see here in Memphis with John and Jaron leading us into the future, Utah in the present is a pretty good idea. Coming up, I'm going to talk a bit more with Tony about how things have worked just overall for the Jazz franchise for them to emerge as the best team in the NBA so far this season. Time to once again name our Michelob Ultra Player of the Week. That's the Ultra Player of the Week, and I know that I gave him the award just a few weeks ago, but it's hard not to give it again um, to this guy for what he's done this week, and so we're just going to go ahead and do it, and we're going to name the Ultra Player of the Week as Jonas Valanciunas. This week alone, over the past week alone, Jonas has you know set a new franchise record for consecutive games with 15 or more rebounds. He has joined Zach Randolph and Pal Gasol as the only players in Grizzlies franchise history with 30 or more points and 15 or more rebounds in five different games as a member of the Grizzlies. Though he may never reach the scale that Mark Gasol, Pal Gasol, or Zach Randolph have meant to the Grizzlies, he certainly has shown he can be on their level for doing well what big men do well. And that's rebound and score consistently, and that's something Jonas Valanciunas has certainly done. But if you talk to him, he doesn't want to talk about any of that. He wants to talk about the joy that he has with playing with the teammates that he has on the Grizzlies. He wants to talk about the happiness that is generated from playing the brand of basketball that they can do, and that allows for all of them to play with enjoyment. And I can tell you this, if you want enjoyment as a Grizzlies fan, watching the Grizzlies, and besides the fun that you have seeing them play, enjoy it with a nice cold glass of Michelob Ultra, only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. Enjoyment isn't the game, it's the whole game. Are you happy because you win, or do you win because you're happy? If you're a fan of the Memphis Grizzlies and you're Jonas Valanciunas or any of the Grizzlies, they can answer the latter. They're happy, they're, 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 they win because they are happy, and so make your fan experience even happier, happier for when you're watching the Grizzlies by enjoying a nice cold glass of Michelob Ultra. Stay tuned for our new edition of the Ultra Player of the Week next week when we name another really, really productive Grizzlies player, the Michelob Ultra Player of the Week. This episode is brought to you by Philips One by Sonicare. One up your brushing with Philips One. This one is the ideal one for those who are still using an old school manual toothbrush. To all those people, it's time to take your brushing one level up. The solution is a simple one. It's the perfect timing one. It's the long lasting battery powered or USB rechargeable one. The comes in multiple colors to match you one. The one with a subscription that delivers new brush heads for just $5. Your teeth deserve this one. Philips One by Sonicare. One up your brushing. Learn more at philips.com slash one. That's P-H-I-L-I-P-S dot com slash O-N-E. Get all the sports news you need in 20 minutes or less with this Locked On Today podcast. Peter Burkowski, who's Peter Burkowski, updates you on the latest news in every major sport with the help of our local experts. Follow the Locked On Today podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, we're with Tony Jones on The Athletic here, uh, talking about the Jazz and Grizzlies coming up tonight um, in the FedEx Forum. And, and Tony, you know, a big thing that we have loved here in Memphis with Taylor Jenkins is his ability to develop, his ability to get the most out of the players that he coaches, even to the point of helping them surpass their perceived ceilings coming out of college or whatever it may be. And, well, that's the that's the defining characteristic of Quinn Snyder in Utah, so many of these players have emerged as being more than many anticipated they would be. Brody Gobert, Donovan Mitchell, the best examples. Just overall, Snyder's just, you know, how he's done it and just how impressed you've been with not only developing these guys, but now putting it all together into the the just absolutely impressive product that's out there today with the Jazz being the best team in the NBA. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things where okay so we talked about Mike, um, Mike obviously clicked in his second year, um, you know Donovan Mitchell got better, Rudy Gobert got better, they became better players. Um, 
and you sort of expected that. I mean, you definitely expected it out of Donovan. You probably expected it out of Rudy, even though he's 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 in his prime. Um, but what you didn't expect was uh, Joe Ingles to become a better player, you know, because he's 32 or 33 years old or however old he is. He's in his 30s, and he's playing at a career level. Uh, Royce O'Neal's playing at a career level. So you got a whole bunch of guys playing at a career level. Um, you know, uh, and Rudy Gobert's gone from, you know, all-star to, you know, he's just been one of the best players in the league this year. Um, you know, so you have, you, you know, you have all of these ingredients and, and the Jazz, you know, figured it out. They went all in on shooting. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I didn't mention Jordan Clarkson. Jordan Clarkson, obviously, uh, he's having his best season. Um, you know, the Jazz went all in on, you know, having, you know, Donovan Mitchell and, and Clarkson and, and, and Mike Conley as guys who can touch the paint whenever they want off the dribble. But then you surround all of those guys with shooting. So you have, you know, the Jazz never go without, you know, they rarely go without four shooters on the floor at the same time. And that just spaces the floor and spreads everything, spreads everybody out. They're capable of getting stops on the other end of the floor. Uh, they're a unique team because, you know, they're so capable of beating you from the three-point line, but they're also equally as capable of putting pressure on the rim and putting pressure in the mid-range so they can score at all three levels. And it's just difficult, especially in a regular season, where it's hard to prepare for, for a team because games come so fast and furious. It's just difficult to prepare for that kind of um, versatility uh, and explosion offensively. So, you know, what you have, and in, in, it'll be interesting to see if this this um, stays the same during the playoffs when you have more time to prepare. But what you have is a, t- a team that, that's just very difficult to guard. And, you know, for as much uh, attention as the Jazz's three-point shooting gets, you know, they're capable of scoring 125 points you know, on a night where they shoot 25% from three, um, you know, just because they're they're so capable of, of, of putting pressure on the rim as well. Um, so, you know, they're, they're just hard to guard. They're hard to deal with. And, and um, you know, they have continuity up and down the lineup um, and up, up and down their rotation. And, and they've been able to get stops this year, uh, whereas last year it was a lot harder for them to get defensive stops. And one thing that, you know, I will say that has been also amazing to see is if we if we go back a year ago, you know, obviously um, when the NBA, you know, season was stopped, uh, the Jazz um, were at the center of that. You know, there there were some you know, reports uh, about, you know, Rudy Gobert, Donovan Mitchell, their relationship, things such as that. But, you know, just to your knowledge on that, just want to get your opinion on just how awesome it's been to see, you know, here in Memphis, all of our fans, everybody who covers the Grizzlies, we love the culture, the camaraderie, the fraternity, um, just the love between teammates that's here. It really seems like that that's another thing that has come together for the Jazz. You know, a, a year ago there, you know, it seems like that there was you know, negativity. I don't know how much of that was true. But basically what I'm getting at is, is that overcoming that a year later and this season, it seems like that that that, that culture and that brotherhood is there in the locker room once again for the Jazz. And, and you know, just the cohesiveness that's there between the depth that they're able to feature on a nightly basis that ability, that cohesiveness is also really an advantage, especially between Mitchell and Gobert from where they were a year ago. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I've written about this. Um, um, actually, I wrote about it, you know, in a piece that I did on Donovan Mitchell. You know, the bubble really helped the Jazz uh, in, in, in this in this sense. You know, they they were able to, to, to come together and, and work out whatever differences they, that they've had that they had and, you know, they were able to, to, um, you know, galvanize uh, as a locker room and reconnect as a locker room. Um, and, and that's helped them going into this year. And, you know, they've played this season with a chip on their collective shoulders. Uh, they've, they've played this season, you know, as a really hungry team that, you know, and, and, and you know, most of their veterans haven't really accomplished anything uh, in terms of, in terms of team success. 
you know, Mike had the, the I believe, the 2013 Western Conference uh, Finals run uh, with Memphis. But, you know, other than that, you know, uh, you know, nobody as a rotation player or as a, as a key rotation piece uh, has been to a, a conference final. I mean, Jordan Clarkson, um, you know, he was like a fringe rotation player. Uh, he was on the 2018 team, uh, Cleveland Cavaliers, that went to the NBA Finals. But, you know, there hasn't been a lot of team success uh, through this locker room. So, you know, those are a lot of those, – those are a bunch of guys that want to win. They want to win on a high level, um, you know, and they have a lot of talent. And, and you know, and they have a lot of experience. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how far they can take this season. And then the one other question that I will ask you about the Jazz's success this season, just to kind of put it in as simplify it in statistical terms as possible, is that the one thing that I had mentioned, the Grizzlies coming into this year really needed to improve upon to make themselves true playoff contenders is both shooting and defending the three. Well, the Jazz, that seems to be their specialty. I know they do other things well. Being able to score at all three levels, obviously Gobert anchoring the defense with his rim protection. But it really seems like focusing on shooting the three and making life hard for the opposition to shoot the three has just been the absolute formula for success for the Jazz. How big has that been? I know you mentioned shooting you know, earlier this segment, but also defending the three. Being able to do both of those things on the perimeter really seems to stand out in what separates good teams from elite teams in today's NBA. Yeah, last year, you know, they had – so, you know, their theory last year was, you know, force everybody inside the three-point line, you know, funnel everybody to Rudy – um, you know, make teams, you know, shoot 80% from the mid range. Um, and, you know, they, for some reason, they just weren't able to do that. And this season, you know, they've, they've been able to do that. You know, they've been able to force guys, you know, inside the, the line and, 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 and get guys, you know, force guys to the basket and into Rudy, uh, where Rudy's been so good. And that's why, you know, their defense has been so good, um, you know, outside and inside the three-point line. Um, you know, and it's a, it's a mathematics thing. Um, if you're trading threes for twos uh, and, and you're doing that for 48 minutes, you're probably going to win that game. And I think that the Jazz figured that out. That's where their analytics kicks in. Um, you know, and, and and they've been able to do a lot of things defensively uh, this season that they, they haven't been able to do last season. It's certainly been impressive to watch. And speaking of impressive, the Grizzlies, when they played the Jazz on Friday night, they had did an impressive job, you know, being able to stay with the Jazz. Of course, last Saturday night, uh, the Jazz were able to, you know, handle the Grizzlies pretty easily. Coming up, we'll talk with Tony a bit more about the Jazz-Grizzlies matchup tonight, and we'll also get his opinion on a recent question that's come up about who the best defender truly is between Tony Allen and Draymond Green. Excitement is in the air. The tension is mounting. There could not be more thrilling opportunities at hand than determining who the true champion will be. Now, you may be thinking that I'm talking about the men's or women's Final Four, which are now set, but I'm actually talking about another March Madness tournament that's sweeping the nation's attention, and that's the Built Bar March Madness Tournament. That is correct. The best-tasting protein bar that's been around for quite a while now. We've been talking with you about it for more than a year because of the great benefit that it is to your day and the health benefit that it'll add to your day, and that's BuiltBar.com. And the crazy thing about it is there are now over 18 different flavors to choose from. So no matter what your taste buds are craving, you're likely going to find a taste that really satisfies them going forward. And the great thing is, is that they're letting you determine what the best taste is over at BuiltBar.com right now in the Built Bar March Madness Tournament. You go vote today, you'll be able to choose between coconut brownie, chunk, and mint brownie. Now, both say brownie, so I'm highly, highly, you know, inv interested in this matchup. But between mint and coconut, I'm going to go coconut. If you go to BillBar.com or bar underscore Bill, you'll be able to choose and make sure you choose. But also while you're there, if you've enjoyed Bill Bar, like I've mentioned to you, I have for months now. The great thing is, is that you can put in the promo code LOCKED15, that's LOCKED15, and get 15% off your next order from Bilt Bar by putting in the promo code LOCKED15. Again, go to BiltBar.com, vote for today's matchup, and put in LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next order from Bilt Bar. 
Tomorrow is finally almost here for all of us baseball fans. I love the Grizzlies, but I also love the Braves. And baseball opening day is one of the most exciting times of the year for me as a baseball fan. Want to see how many home runs your favorite player may hit? Go to BetOnline.ag. They got odds likely up. Want to see how many wins your favorite pitcher may earn this year? Go to BetOnline.ag. They've got odds likely up. BetOnline, no matter if it's baseball, basketball, hockey, UFC, whatever you choose to cheer for, if part of your fun as a fan is betting and wagering on sports, BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to get all your sports action. It even covers awards, TV shows, and reality TV. Real-time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine. BetOnline has you covered for all the news, scores, and odds. It's the best way to place your bets, and it's free to sign up. Using the promo code Locked On, head to the website and use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Again, that's using the promo code Locked On to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline, your online sportsbooks experts. Visit BetOnline.ag today. Get more analysis on the top prospects available in this year's NBA draft with the Locked On NBA podcast, scouting reports, draft rumors, mock drafts, and full coverage of March Madness four days a week from credential draft experts. Follow the Locked On NBA draft podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. So, Tony, you were there. Um, I, I'm not sure if you were there firsthand or not. Um, I, I believe you were Saturday night, but regardless, I'm sure you watched the game on, on Friday night between the Grizzlies and the Jazz. But just from this past weekend in general, um, you know, we've talked about Jaw and his impact on the team. But for this Grizzlies team in the second year of a rebuild, I believe that you also saw him last year in the bubble. What really stood out to you about them that has impressed you about seeing them play? For me, it's been the defense this year. But what stood out to you about them, you know, that could make them potentially a, a more, you know, a, a better opponent than many may think is a first round matchup for the Jazz if it was a one to eight matchup in the playoffs this year. Well, their toughness and their bravado. Um, you know, those guys they don't back down and you know, they they go at you for forty eight minutes. And um, you know, they have you know, Ja obviously we talked about Ja. Um but you know, one thing to rem- to remember um, that if the Jazz see the Grizzlies in the first round, um, they're probably also going to see Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, you know, and, and, you know, the Grizzlies haven't had him uh, all season. And, and I think that, you know, once those two are healthy, you know, John, Jaron, once they're healthy together, I mean, that, that team takes another step. Um, you know, the physicality that they play with, um, you know, Jonas Valanciunas, he occupies Rudy in the paint because, you know, he's so physical and, and he's able to score, um, you know, obviously Dylan Brooks, you know, on both ends of the floor, um, you know, Kyle Anderson, they just have a ton of pieces, you know, that, that, you know, on a night to night basis, you know, just, they just make it uh, difficult for, for the opposition. Um you know, they're still, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious that they're still score away. They, they need a dynamic wing score. Um, that's, that's pretty obvious. Um, but, you know, they're a team that that's going to be a headache. If they get to the playoffs, they're, they're going to be a headache for any team that they face uh, just because of, you know, how physical and, you know, how dynamic they are uh, in the open floor because of Ja. And you know how good a coach that Taylor is. I mean, Taylor's Taylor's a guy that that you know, if I were a player, um, I'd want to play for um, any day of the week because he's going to be prepared. Uh, he's you know he's going to um, you know have his guys ready, and and he's good at X's and O's. He's good at, at in game adjustments, um, and also you know shout out to Brad Jones who's. Um, who who I count as one of my personal friends. Um, you know, our, our our kids went to the same school when he was in Utah. Uh so we, we got to know each other very uh very well. So so shout out to Coach Jones because uh he's one of my favorite people in in the league. Yeah, Brad Jones, one of the assistants here, I believe he was before Jason Marsh. He was the um, hustle coach, if I remember correctly. I'm, I'm, I'm getting older on my end, so I can't remember if I tied my shoes or not together this morning. 
But uh, but yeah, I, I, it's been fun to watch. The depth is certainly there. But Tony, another reason why I do like to talk with you, you know, as I mentioned earlier in the show, is because you know you do have a very positive opinion of Mike Conley, of Zach Randolph, and of the grit and grind Grizzlies. Obviously, just real quickly, how big of a fan were you of the grit and grind Grizzlies when they played in the past? Oh, a huge fan, um, because you know those guys. You know, they were underdogs and, and, you know, and they were, first of all, I, you know, it was funny because um, I did a, a huge piece on, on Mike Conley and, um, you know, before I sat down with him, you know, I told him, you know, it's tough to cover you because you're one of the few players in the league and uh, probably, you know, I didn't start covering the league till you know, 2014. So, you know, the majority of the players that I run into um, nowadays, you know, came into the league after 2014 or whatever, but I've always been a fan of the league. So, you know, guys that, that, you know, were in the league, you know, well before I became, you know, I became, you know, Tony Jones, NBA reporter, you know, those are guys that I watched and they were guys that I was fan of, fans of. And I've been a fan of Mike Conley, you know, just as a basketball fan since, you know, his Lawrence North phase in Indiana. And, you know, I was a fan, you know, I, you know, I love watching him in Ohio State and I love watching him. Um, I love watching him at, um, in, in Memphis, you know, so, you know, I told Mike, I said, it's actually tough to cover you because I'm like covering you professionally, but I was like, you know, I was like, you know, a real fan of how you play, you know, because in my playing days, I was a point guard. So, you know, I, I love the way Mike played and how he commands the position, you know, so, um, you know, it, I, I, I always loved um, how those guys went about their business. You know, they were very businesslike, and they were underdogs, so it was really fun to watch them, them, uh, them, you know, go out and, and and beat teams that probably had more talent than them. You know that that Clippers team, um, you know that you know that Oklahoma uh, City series was was epic. Um, you know, so they had so many uh, good moments, and obviously they didn't climb the mountain. Uh, the ultimate mountain and, and win a championship. Um, but, you know, for, you know, eight years, you know, they, uh, they were really, you know, super relevant in, on, on the national NBA landscape uh, just because of uh, how they went about their business. And, and I have nothing but respect and admiration uh, for what that core, you know, Zach, Tony, Mike, uh, Mark, you know, I have nothing but respect and admiration for what that core was able to accomplish. And it was so much fun to watch them here in Memphis because they were kind of like in Utah with this current squad that they have. They were organically built because they were in a system that that built around their strengths, right? And that's what Utah's built around with Gobert and Ingles and, and Mitchell, obviously. Uh, but, you know, one of the best products of that was Tony Allen. And, and some recent comments went back and forth between him and Draymond Green when Draymond was talking about him potentially, you know, Draymond feels he's the best defender of all time. I think there certainly is an argument to be made about him being the smartest defender of all time. But of course, you know, we've got KD and Kobe who both have said that Tony Allen was the toughest defender that they've ever faced. I won't necessarily ask you point Blake who you feel is the better defender, but you know, Tony, when it comes to today's NBA defense, we always think about the best defenders being the one-on-one -on -one guys, the guys who could purely shut down the other team's best score but it seems today also you've got to have the universal defenders, the switchable guys who can guard one through five and with the intelligence to direct their other teammates. Do you think that both being the guy that can, you know, direct the defense and be switchable versus the guy that can play the ultimate one-on-one -on -one defense, do both of those defensive profiles have a place in today's game or has one become more important than the other as the game has evolved? Well, okay. So first of all, the best defender of all time is Dennis Rodman and not Chicago Bulls, Dennis Rodman, but Detroit Pistons, Dennis Rodman, because he encapsulates both of what you, you know, what you describe here. He was the switchable one through five defender that could single handedly wreck your offense from a team defense standpoint. And yet, 
you could throw him in the last five minutes of the game. You could say, go guard Michael Jordan, go guard Magic Johnson, go guard Dominique Wilkins, go guard Larry Bird, um, and, and go get stops. And he would get stops for you. You could put him on Shaq, and he would get stops for you. You could put him on Patrick Ewing, and he would get stops for you. He, Dennis, Detroit Pistons Dennis Rodman was – far and away the best defender that I've ever seen. And, you know, I would, I would, I would solidly say that that was, he's the best defender and that was the best defender in NBA history. That being said, uh, Draymond Green and, and Tony Allen, you know, they certainly have their points and, and I'll, and I'll tell you where they have their points. Tony Allen grew up in an isolation league, right? So, you know, in Tony, when Tony Allen was, you know, in his prime, um, you know, you had to go and guard Kobe, you had to go and guard KD, you had to go and guard LeBron. You know, you they, you know, by and large, up until 2012, 2013, you know, the league didn't really start changing to what it is now until around 2014. Um, up until those times, you know, it was still an isolation league. Bring the ball up, give the ball to your guy, you know, have your guy go to work. So the guy that can that that could guard isolation and 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 shut those guys down, that was the guy that was going to have the most value. And obviously, Tony had had some of the most value defensively out of anybody in the league because of that. The way the league is today, your pace and space, everything is pick and roll. Um, you know, everything is, 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 um, you know, from the three point line, um, the guy that can do what Draymond does, which is switch from one to five, you know, direct your defense from, from the back line, back line communication, uh, you know, um, go and clean up the rebound, push the ball in transition, you know, that's what makes Draymond Green. You know, so so successful, and this is kind of what, you know, whatever the argument is between Rudy Gobert and Ben Simmons, that you know, that's to me has been sort of contrived this year. You know, the the system defender, which is Rudy Gobert, uh, to the guy who's you know quote unquote switchable one through five, which is you know Ben Simmons. You know, I can tell you when the, the awards voting comes out. You know, my vote for defensive player of the year uh, is going to go to Rudy Gobert, and it's not, you know, because of of it's not because of you know whether he's systematic or whether he's switchable or whatever. It's just because he's just been the best defender in basketball this year. Um, you know, but when you look at Draymond and you look at Tony Allen, you know, it, it's 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 kind of more of, you know, what era of basketball are you playing in? Are you playing in, in 2010 or are you playing in 2021? And I think that that's probably going to dictate more uh, of, of, you know, which guy that you pick uh, for, for, for what game that you're playing, because uh, they were at the top of the league value wise for, for the league, um, that they happen to play in, and I think that that context and that nuance, I think it get it got lost in that conversation. And this is why I like Tony so much. He puts things in such great perspective. Tony, I'm right there with you. Um, I I I'll sit here and stand Tony Allen over Draymond, though I do think that they are different types of defenders, just because Tony is a Grizzlies player. But I have thought, you know, for, from seeing the Bulls and, and, and I did I was too young to see the Pistons you know firsthand though I've seen highlights I've always thought Dennis Rodman was the best defender of all time and, and I agree because it because he can do both and it just seems like you know nothing against the younger generation it's just they weren't able to see him up front it's a shame that they couldn't because of how well he played defense like I know that he certainly you know is known for other things the narratives and you know obviously the personality but he was such a good defender and so I'm certainly right there with you as he's been the best defender I've seen um, in my time, but really great perspective as far as Allen and Draymond goes. And obviously, of course, with, with Rudy Gobert and Ben Simmons and others today. But, but Tony, I, I know a lot of folks know you around Memphis again from your great work. Just where can they find 
your work at? Do you have any, you know, big things coming up, you know, obviously covering the number one team in the NBA? Any big, th- any big things from you on the horizon in terms of the Jazz or the NBA in general? Well, I just did a draft primer for the Jazz. I don't know if you're going to be interested in that as a Memphis fan. Um, but, you know, I, I uh, if you're interested in the draft, look at that draft primer because I, I went through strengths and weaknesses and, and a comprehensive breakdown of, of five prospects who um, should be available to the Jazz at the end of the first round. Um, you know, I have some other things coming out. Uh, you can reach me uh, on Twitter at T Jones at the NBA, T Jones on the NBA, uh, and obviously I'm on uh, I'm on the pages of the Athletic, and uh, I'm I'm blessed and grateful to be working working there and 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 to be able to um, to be able to cover the league. Well, it's always a pleasure. And, and now when it comes to draft time, Tony, now I've got to put this plug in there. You're going to be high on Tennessee Vols, Keon Johnson, Jaden Springer, and Eve Ponds, right? You've got them one, two, and three on your big board right now for this draft, right? i tell you what, I don't have a one, two, and three on the big board, but I absolutely have all, all three of those guys high, uh, especially <laughs> especially Keon. Yep. A lot a lot of folks oh, are enjoying also, him. I, also, let me – let me Tennessee volunteer fans, you know, watch out for my guy, uh, Jemiah Mashak, who's, who's going to be yep. an incoming freshman next year. Uh, that that's, yep. that's my guy. And that's, that's been my guy since he was like 12 years old. So watch out for him. Uh, he's going to, he's a heck of a wing. Uh, he's going to be, a, he's going to turn into a heck of a two-way player for you guys. Of course. Now I, we're we're in Memphis Tigers country, but I, I I've got to put the shameless plug on there since I'm a big balls fan. We don't get to talk that often, so I've got to put it out there. But his name is Tony Jones. If, if you've not been able to enjoy his work, please go check it out. Just unbelievable work. It, it, all things Mike Conley, the Utah Jazz. Just a great person as well. Very kind enough to spend time with us, Tony. If you'll stick with us for just a second after the show, again you can find myself at Stats AC on Twitter. The show at Locked On Grizzlies. Find the podcast wherever they are available. Tony's great work in the athletic. For Tony Jones, my name is Sean Coleman. Hopefully, we can enjoy a Grizzlies victory tonight. No offense, Tony, but we'll talk to you again soon here on the Locked On Grizzlies podcast.